guys who are writing letters, hurry up. Looks like this will be our last stop. Hey, look, Sarge. My girl lives in Jersey City, see? And I was wondering if maybe we might be headed for... Uh, what I mean is, is there still a military secret, or do you know where we're going? Well, I sure do, Jersey. Yeah? We're going to win a war. <laughs> <laughs> You know, something tells me this will probably be the last letter you're gonna have to write to Mamie for me, Dakota. So finish it off hot. You know, romantic. Something she can keep under a pillow. Well, how about saying, uh, Mamie, sweetheart, this will probably be my last letter from American soil. But wherever we're going, I'll take the memory of your kisses and your arms around me. Is that hot enough for you, Jersey? Mamie wrote me she sure didn't know she could kiss me as good as you said she could, Dakota. But she sure was glad to hear it. Yes, I've been missing something. I haven't ever even kissed a girl. Go on, I bet you even tried to improve on Dakota. Dakota says we may unload right onto a transport. So, so maybe this will be my last letter. I just want you to know that whatever happens to me, I hope you'll be as proud of me, Dad, as I am of you. Sorry for butting in, California. That's OK, Jersey. I haven't got a girl to write to. <laughs> Holy smoke, look, guys, a girl. What? <laughs> Fresh out of smoke. Thank you. Any hey, letters you want mail? Oh, we sure have. Thank you. Looks if you boys are on your way. Yes, ma'am, we sure hope so. Don't burn your fingers on this one. It's to my girl. <laughs> How about kissing a little Texas boy who's going to be a hero? <laughs> I've been wondering, Dakota. You're always helping us guys write letters, but you never write any yourself. Well, you see, I lost my mother and father when I was still a kid. But haven't you got a girl? No. I'm sort of women for the duration. <sighs> well, if you'd like to get letters from somebody, I know my dad would be mighty pleased to write to you. Thanks, kid. I might take your dad up on that. Sometimes a fellow feels like he'd like to write to somebody. I've been thinking about those letters you've been making up for Jersey's girl. Kind of makes a guy wish he had a nice girl he could kiss goodbye himself. It's not always easy for a fellow to meet a nice girl, kid. I know. I was just thinking. You stick to just thinking. It's cheaper and almost as much fun. I guess the question you men want answered is, are we climbing a gangplank this morning? Well, you're going to get a break. You've got 24 hours leave. Probably most of you have never seen New York City. So this is your chance. You'll find that the uniform is the key to the hospitality of New York. Don't abuse that uniform or the hospitality. Report here for Reveille and orders tomorrow morning at 6. Meanwhile, you might store up a few memories to take with you wherever we're going. Company! Attention! First Sergeant. Dismiss the company. Unlock! The sense who read Mamie's letters don't beat me to our house. What do you say we get rid of these field uniforms and give New York the once over? Yeah, maybe meet a nice girl. Wow, two bucks for a steak. But well, we won't have much use for American money where we're going. <laughs> Wonder what you have to do to get a waiter in this Ritzy restaurant. Join the Signal Corps? Hey, Dakota, look. Oh, hello, Miss Lee. Hello, Max. Now, you know Benton Fadley, don't you? How do you do, Mr. Fadley? Hello, Mr. Baker. Uh, will you come this way, please?
Well, here we are. All set up for you. I'm the man for the turkey and the gravy. I've come for the ham. No relation, I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She rules Lee all right. When the last time I saw her, she was dressed different. <laughs> <laughs> the boss volunteers the food. And those famous people volunteer to pick it up for the stage door canteen. You boys are chumps to waste your dough here. When you can eat our stuff down there, for free. Opens at five. We just came in for a look around. Yes, sir. <clears throat> <laughs> I sure hope we meet some pretty girls. See your cars, girls, please. Thanks. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello there, how are you? See a car. Oh, Lillian, uh, Selena Royal wants to see you. What about? I don't know. She's off till today. Yeah. See your right. cards, girls, please. Thanks. Want to see me, Miss Royal? Oh, oh, yes, Lillian. Come in. Close the door. Lillian, did you make a date with a soldier in the canteen last night? Right. Yes, I did, Miss Royal. Did you go out with him afterwards? Yes. But you know the rules. You know no girl is supposed to make a date with a soldier she meets here. Oh, yes, Miss Royal, but he was such a nice boy. I felt awfully sorry for him. He was so lonesome, and he didn't know a soul. He only went over to Roseland for a couple of dances, and then the automat for a bite. I was in by 2 o'clock. I know, dear, but these rules are made for a good reason, and we've got to be strict with violations. I won't do it again. I'm afraid you won't have an opportunity. Because I've got to pick up your pass. Does... Does that mean I won't be able to come down here and help anymore? Yes, I'm afraid it means just that. Oh, please, Miss Royal. You're one of the co-chairmen of the canteen. Couldn't you please speak to Miss Cowell about it? Can't I have another chance? Makes me feel like I'm doing something to help. And because just like the boys who come down here, no matter how blue I am, I get cheered up. I know just how you feel, dear, but... Well, there's nothing I can do about it. I've got to pick up your pass. It was just that he was so homesick. You know what I bet? What? I bet my folks would just about swoon if they knew I was entertaining Yankee soldiers night after night. Honey, you got Alabama dripping from those pretty lips of yours. I can hear it from here. Well, I declare, a southern gentleman amongst all of these Yankees. Hello. Hey, kids, hurry up. We're going to be late. Uh, my name's Alice Sue. I'll see you later. I sure hope some of the big stars and producers are here tonight. Oh, well, they all come down one time or another. Every night there's a different shift. Come on, Alice Sue. I think I'm going to like this. I just hope the place isn't too fancy. Do you think those girls are actresses? Well, they're pretty enough. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Your pass to go through any means of identification, okay. Here, food check. Okay, dog tags, food fellas, check. please. Did you hear? Hear what? About Lillian, they picked up her card. Oh, then she did go out with that kid from Iowa. Hello, Peggy. Hello. Hello, Ann, how are you? Hello. Hello, Vera. Hello, dear. Vera, this is our roommate, Eileen Burke. It's her first night at the canteen. Hello, Eileen. Hang your coat over there and pick up your apron over here. And I hope your feet hold out. <laughs> Thank you. Eileen, if you forget any of the rules, just ask Ella Sue or me. I suppose I meet a wolf? They won't make any passes at you, honey. 
All you've got to do is just be firm. But in a cute sort of way. Mm. Soldiers and sailors on leave want something more than somebody to talk to. <laughs> hey, didn't I see your boss cleaning tables out there? Mr. Pemberton? Yes, why? House for an introduction. He's casting a new play, isn't he? Now, look, skip that career for tonight, cutie. You're here to show the boys a good time. And Mr. Pemberton isn't here as a producer. He's here to keep the tables clean. Why couldn't I help him clean up a table or two? Give me a chance to show him my press clipping. Oh, Eileen, forget yourself. You just wait. You'll find it gets in your blood. I've taken to counting soldiers instead of sheep to put me to sleep. What I'm wondering is how I'm going to say yes and no to that southern boy at the same time. Edwin. Gee, we didn't expect to see you here. Oh, nobody did. As a matter of fact, when I told those boys out west, I mean the biggest dignitaries in the moving picture business, when I told them that I was coming here and I walked into their room, they got right on their knees. What a reception. What a tribute. What a crap game. My <laughs> <laughs> goodness. They're hit. Oh, you're in the Navy. I can see that. <laughs> here you are. A male whack, for heaven's sake. <laughs> First one I ever saw. Check your hat. Better see you. Hey, Dakota. Is not Alan Mowbray emptying ashtrays? Yeah. Imagine Alan Mowbray having to get a job as a bus boy. I thought he was doing all right in pictures. Nice sail, boy. Jolly party, isn't it? What did you say? A, a jolly party, isn't it? Far enough. Hey, George, you've been having a lot of rainy weather out in California lately, haven't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that, Bill. Just two feet of do. Two feet of do. Yeah, Mac. Okay, George. Say, George, tell me, you've been taking a lot of fighters around to the army camps for the entertainment of the boys. Who's the greatest fighter that you've ever seen? Pound for pound, Henry Armstrong. He's the only fighter that held three world's titles at the same time. Well, you're right there. How about these Brooklyn Dodgers? You're always rooting for the Dodgers. Think Brooklyn's gonna win the pennant this year? Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. But I know one team that can't lose. Who's that? That team there. How much for a ham sandwich, please? There's no charge. Not for the chocolate cake, either. No. Here's some with icing. It's been a long time. Mm. Those oranges for us, Mum? Of course they are. I haven't seen one in two years. Blimey. It's just like Christmas, ain't it? Just like Christmas. Thank you. You're welcome. You're Catherine Cornell, aren't you? Yes, how'd you know? Well, our dramatic coach at school has your picture. He said we hadn't lived until we'd seen you play Julia. <laughs> See, we put it on and I was Romeo. You were? What thing did you like best? You remember where Romeo swears by the moon? Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear. The tips with silver, all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not for the moon. The inconstant moon. That monthly changes in her circle at all. Unless if our love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt. Swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry. And I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love. Well, do not swear. Though I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning that did cease to be. Everyone one can say it lightning. Sweet. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Hey, what's all about the line? A little unrationed hand being served. <laughs> We're holding up the works, Romeo. I'll never eat this orange, Julia. I'll just keep it to remember. Sugar? You come along with me to a table, Southern boy. I want you all to myself. 
I'm sure you boys will pardon my absence. Hello. Hello. Are you going to be my girl? Yes, I'll be your girl while you're here. What's your name? Well, the fellas call me California, but my real name is Jack Gilman. Mm, I like California best. My name is Jean. How old are you? Oh, well, I'm not telling. Go on, please. It's important. You name it, California. You're 18. Oh, gee, thanks. You want me to hold your hand while you drink your milk? You got nothing to worry about, Eileen. They're all gents are bashful. See that tough sergeant? I bumped into him and I said, uh, what do you do? And he said, I'm a chorus girl in the Irving Berlin show. <laughs> you give me lots of assurance, Mr. Demarest. Where do you get that Mr. Demarest stuff? You know my name is Bill. Don't be so nervous. You act like this was a first night opening. Take it easy. Hello, Eileen. Well, hello, Miss Scott. Well, how nice to see you. What have you been doing since the play closed? Well, nothing yet, but I have prospects. Well, this is your first night at the canteen, isn't it? Yes. Are you one of the hostesses? Uh-huh. I don't know how to start. I've, I've got kind of a sinking feeling. Well, if you're going to sink, miss, you might pick this chair right here. And there's your answer, Eileen. See you later. Please, I saved it for you. Can I get you something to eat? No, thanks. We can't eat the food here. Well, what's the matter with it? Looks mighty good to me. It's a rule. It was donated for you to eat, not us. Where do you live? That's another rule. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> sort of a civilian secret, huh? <laughs> Look, my name's Ed Smith, and we're gonna... Oh, oh it's another rule. Against telling us where you're going. You got me wrong. I don't know where I'm going. I was just going to say... Oh, first we're supposed to ask you where you're from. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Then I think we're supposed to ask to see your sweetheart's picture, and we talk about how nice she is. I haven't got a sweetheart. I'm sort of between girls. Why, Walter Winchell had it that Ed Smith and the Belle of Sioux Falls were sizzling. Oh, uh, well, I guess we sizzled some of that. I'll never forget. When the last war was over, my captain paid me the swellest compliment. He said, Private Kennedy, you are now and always will be the perfect non-entity. <laughs> <laughs> he always thought a lot of me. <laughs> hey, Ed. Didn't you start your stage career in vaudeville? Oh, sure. I came from a famous vaudeville family. My uncle was Raja, Raja and his lions. Did you ever see that act? Fifteen years my uncle was in vaudeville. He used to open the lion's mouth and put his whole head right in the lion's mouth. <laughs> but one day, the darndest thing happened. <laughs> and, hello, uncle. <laughs> Everybody, this is Bert Lytell, your MC. Fellas, I'm only on for 10 seconds to make an announcement. You've heard it said that you can't get blood out of a stone, well, you can't get it out of our next guest either. Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from the Mystic East. And now, with your kind indulgence, I shall delve into the mysteries of supernatural and the occult. Hey, Bergen. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what's the racket? Racket? Yeah. Young man, I happen to be gifted. Say not so. Yes, indeed. Uh, be darned. <laughs> I'm a student of occultism. Of occultism? No, not occultism. No. No. What? Ism. 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 Oh. Ism what, dear? Oh. <laughs> I am the seventh son of the seventh son of the seventh son. Well, come on, seven. Do something. <laughs> well, what, what's, the, what's the globule for? You mean this? Yeah, the bowling ball. Well, do you know what I see when I look into that? Goldfish? No, no, no. no, no. What, what's it for? Well, you see, it helps me to focus my attention. Is that so? Yes. When I gaze into the crystal, a vision appears. Is that right? Yes. Well, I've been having a vision, yeah. Well, what's a vision? A vision? Yeah. What is a vision? Now, I asked you first. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, a vision, well, it's very much like a mirage. Oh, it's like a mirage, yes. Oh, so that's what it is. Oh, it's a mirage, yeah, yes. Uh, what's a mirage? A mirage? Yeah. Well, that's very much like a vision. 
Yeah. Oh, it's a nice accusation, I see. Shall we go around again? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, Professor. Give out with the finami. All right, I will. Now, of course, in order for me to do this, I will have to go into a trance. Well, I'll wait here. Yes, all right. <laughs> well, what, what is a, a trance? A trance? Yeah. Well, uh, it's a state of semi-consciousness or sleep. Oh, that's so. You haven't far to go. All right. <laughs> Now, of course, I must have absolute quiet. Oh, you certainly should, yes, yes. <clears throat> mm. You think you can make it? Oh, I'll make it. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. You think it's... Shh. What did you say? <laughs> Sounds like a puncture. All right. <laughs> now, shall I read your past first? Do you think you can? I don't think I know. I don't think you know either. Oh. <laughs> Shall I go back to where you were seven years old? Oh, it isn't necessary. Nothing really happened before I was 12. 12, I think. <laughs> the name of Bessie appears here. Oh, it does. Good old Bessie. Whatever became of her? She sat in front of me in history class, I see. Did you learn much about history? Well, not as much as I learned about Bessie, I see. <laughs> You, uh, you were very fond of Bessie. Yes, you could say that. You, uh, were you in love with her? Oh, I wouldn't go as far as say that, no. But it was, uh, it was more than a speaking acquaintance. Oh, you darn right it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me more, fool. Yeah. Uh, I see you still don't believe. Frankly, no. Very well, then. I am forced to employ hypnotism. Is he out of work again? No, no. <laughs> I want you to gaze into my eyes and concentrate. Yeah, easy. Are you, are you hypnotizing or are you watering the lawn? I'll concentrate. Close your eyes. Oh, if you do that again, so help me, I'll slug you, Bergen. All right. Now, at the count of three, you'll be asleep. One, two, uh -huh. three. No, uh, that doesn't. <laughs> oh, no. I'll do it, Bergen. I'll do it. Stop, please. Let us return to the crystal and see what the future holds for you. All right, let's return, yes. What's in there? Well, now, let me see. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> I see a lot of trouble ahead for you, Charlie. Yeah, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bergen. Oh, Mr. Bergen. Well, Mortimer Schnur. Ah, oh, well, well. Well, Mortimer. <laughs> Say, you look pretty handsome in that hat. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Well, why don't you smile at all the girls and show them your dimples? <laughs> oh, come on. Isn't that a pretty girl down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now, why don't you wink at her? No. Well, she won't bite you. Oh, I wish she would. Oh. <laughs> well, tell me, what are you doing here? Well, I, I brought you this case. Oh, you brought this in? Yeah. Well, wow. isn't that a pretty big box for you to bring in? Well, that was easy, yeah. It's easy as A, B, uh, A, B, uh... A, B, C? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I always forget the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, Mortimer? Go oh, on, uh... Oh, I'm a boy about my age. About your age, yeah. <laughs> well, where do you live? Oh, with Grandpa. On the farm. Oh, on the farm. Mm -hmm. Is your mother living yet? Um, uh, no, no, I see. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to open this up for you? No, no, never mind. Hmm? What's there in the box? Oh, it says it's full of fish. No, no, where does it say that? Right there. Cod? Oh, that's not cod. No, no. That's C-O-D. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe what you read, can you? No. <laughs> Till I open it up? I'll open the box magically. No. Yes. Well, let's see. Abracadabra, candelabra. <laughs> oh! oh Tracy Beal. America, and you'll hear the story of a boy who deserves a cheer. I tip my lid to a Yankee kid, but this is what he did. Three jet planes were up in the sky, looking for trouble while flying high. Along
along came a yank and what did he do? Ah! And there were two, two jet planes that used to be three. Thought they'd get even, but suddenly the yank turned around and gave him the gun. Ah! And there was one, he clipped their wings with the greatest skill. Just like a barber, he did these things to prove he still remembered Pearl Harbor. The one jet plane still left in the show, thought he'd be safer in Tokyo. But the yank kept on till the job was done. Ah, then there were none. Now what about making these akak noises with me, lads? Are you ready? Three jet planes were up in the sky, looking for trouble while flying high. Along came a yank and what did he do? And there were two, two jet planes that used to be three. Thought they'd get even, but suddenly the yank turned around and gave him the gun. And there was one, he clipped their wings with the greatest skill. A sailor has specially asked me to sing the Lord's Prayer. Gracie, that was like a breath from home. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, it was lovely. Yeah. Very nice. You know, that, that's my mother's favorite. Really? Well, lads, there's somebody else has to work for the living. I've got to say toodaloo and God bless you. Cheer up. Hey, Mike. Hey, can we bolt you? You want to make something out of it? All I asked him was, was he Ray Bolger? Yeah. Oh, there's Brock Pemberton. He's putting on a new play here. Oh, uh, are you in the show business? Everybody here is, one way or another. Well, where are you from? Oswego, New York, but I studied drama in Rochester. Oh, then you are an actress. Well, that's what it says in my clippings. You don't look like an actress. I mean, you look just like the girls back in Sioux Falls. Did you say they wrote you up in the newspaper? Got any clippings with you? Why, only amateurs carry their clippings around. Ah, uh, come on. Let's see what they say. Well, sometimes you might bump into a producer like Mr. Pemberton, so I do carry one, just in case. Eileen Burke had four lines as the insane sister. That's you? 
but her portrayal of tragic and growing insanity impressed the audience. You want nuts in the play? Yeah. Well, show me how you looked when you went nuts. Oh, well, what's the matter? It's just that I've never been out with an actress. Well, so far as I'm concerned, this is as far out with an actress as you're going to get. Oh, I was only kidding you. Hi, y'all. <laughs> hey, hey, let's listen to Sully Mason, Harry Babbitt, Julie Conway, Trudy Irwin, Jack and Max, and the whole gang in A Rookie and His Rhythm. Okay, come on, let's do it. <laughs> And his rhythm, who's he with? He's with a little whack. What's he got? This rookie and his rhythm. He's got what commission officers like. Oh, here he is. A private who can jive it. Here he is. A private second class. The gals prefer a private who can jive it. He'll surpass the colonel making a pass. Though he's new in the service with a gun. He's still nervous and we need him Guess to preserve us. He improves the morale of a gal. Yeah. Majors may be very necessary. Strictly in a military way. But give to me a rookie and his rhythm. Shoulder arms and let the orchestra play. Hip, 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 hip. One, two, three, four. Play it, boy. Well, fellas, but I can see it in your eyes that you want to get going, so come on, Dylan. Yes, dance. tight they'll pack us on a transport. I I guess if a girl falls in love with a fella here, it's really love. Because we can't spend anything on you. First time in the canteen, boys? Would you like to dance? Yes, ma'am, and I want a blonde, five feet three inches tall. I like a brunette, five feet two. Virginia! Yes. One blonde, five feet three inches, uh, one brunette, five feet two, for these gentlemen. Say, lady, how far can we go with these girls? <laughs> Just as far as the door, sir. <laughs> <laughs> say, isn't that Helen Hayes? That's right. She's one of the first ladies of the theater. Sure. I saw her play Queen Victoria once. <laughs> Could I have the honor of dancing with you, Miss Hayes? With all these young girls, why would you want to dance with me? So I could tell my grandchildren I once danced with Queen Victoria. The honor is mine, young man. Hey, Mac, all I wanted to ask you was, would you Ray Bulger?
What time are you through here, Eileen? Twelve. What do you do when you leave? Why don't you try and meet some of the other girls before the evening's over? Oh, I get it. Well, how are you doing at this table? Getting everything you want? Well, not yet, ma'am, but I'm trying hard. <laughs> hey. Look, Mike, I want to get one thing straight. Are you Ray Bolger or ain't you? Take off that coat. Let's grab this one. Now comes a wistful wag of stage and screen. He spends most of his time in the canteen and looks it. When he was a small boy, he got a double hot foot and he never got over it. <laughs> Here he comes by Jupiter, Ray Bolger. Tell you about my girl. She's a beaut. <laughs> she has hair that she wears like Veronica Lake, so that 50% of her is blind. She is known to her daddy as mother's mistake. She's the girl I love to leave behind. She is silly for soldiers and mad for Marines, and she can't get the Coast Guard off her mind. She keeps doing the can-can in all the canteens. She's the girl I love to leave behind. After dancing her round the floor, it's a pleasure to go to war. Oh, she giggles and gurgles and rattles around. Lou Costello is slightly more refined. While I fight in a tank, on a plane, in a jeep, she's the girl I love to leave behind. this drill.
Ray, how about your autograph? Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Meditate on the phonograph. <laughs> do you theater people have these canteens all over the country? Oh, sure we do. We've got canteens. Why, to have one canteen in Washington, D.C. is the darndest thing you ever saw. They don't have famous actors waiting on the soldiers like they do here. Down in Washington, congressmen wait on the boys. Those boys will starve to death down there. You mark my word. Why, Mr. Wynn? Well, you know how long it takes a congressman to pass anything. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. <laughs> Good night, soldier. Well, good night, Eileen. Goodbye, too, I guess. You coming here tomorrow night? Why? Well, with me gone, I thought maybe you'd come and really enjoy yourself. <laughs> you know, Jean, you've given me my happiest moment since I joined the service. Oh, I'm glad. I hope you don't sail, California. I hope you'll be back, because I'd like to be your girl again. Uh, Something wrong with your throat? Yeah. There's a lump in it. down on my socks. I'm soaking wet. That sailor I was with danced like he was seasick. And my last pair of nylons. Gee, I wish this war was over. My feet hurt so. That little old boy from Texas danced a pound off me. He's the sweetest thing. The one I drew threw cracks at me all evening. From where I sat, it seemed like you were throwing a few yourself. How'd you like it, Eileen? Oh, so, so. Didn't even meet Brock Pemberton. Oh, the way my voice said goodnight made me want to last all night. Mine used a shaving lotion that made my knees weak. The boy I was with is on his way home from Australia. He said it's the first time he's seen a girl in six months. He was only 19. Some of them are awfully young. Some party, wasn't it, Dakota? Sure was, Romeo. I thought you said it was hard for a fellow to meet a nice girl in New York. Well, I've been wrong before. I'm under the impression that Yankee gal didn't fall for your charms, Dakota. Why, well, I thought you had a way with women. I guess I lost my touch. Dakota. Yes, kid? On our way home tonight, you said there was something about Eileen. 
What did you mean? Oh, nothing. I was only thinking. What? I was only thinking that if we weren't sailing, I'd like to find out what she's really like. But you said you were off women for the duration. I know. Good night, kid. Good night. I wonder how Jersey's making out with his Mamie. Probably trying his darndest to live up to those letters Dakota wrote for him. Do you think he'll get in before Reveille? Well, I guess that's up to his little old Mamie. Go on, Private Wallace. Well, sir, I ask myself, suppose something happens to me across the water. But then I says to myself, Suppose I don't marry Mamie and something happens to me. Look what I'll miss. What about your intended bride, if something happens to you? Well, I figured that out too, sir. I says to myself, Jersey, if you get conked off, Mamie will get your insurance anyway. Well, anyway, sir, we got our application to get married. The rest's up to you, sir. How long have you been going with this girl? Oh, steady, sir. Two years. Oh, then it isn't one of those before shoving off marital urges. Oh, no, sir. Me and Mamie fit together like an old shoe. Well, I see no reason why I shouldn't give you permission to marry the young lady. Except, first, in order to comply with the marriage laws, you couldn't get married until tomorrow anyway. And second, by that time, you'll probably be out on the Atlantic Ocean. You mean Mamie will have to sleep on our intention to wait for the duration, sir? Captain Robertson speaking. Oh, yes, Colonel Wright. Very well, sir. Private Wallace? Yes, sir. Looks like you're going to get a consolation prize, at least. I can't promise the wedding, but you and the man are going to get another 24 hours leave. Oh, thank you, sir. Me and Mamie will sure know how to use every hour of it, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, pardon me, sir. Give my regards to the young lady. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, issue 24-hour passes to the company. Yes, sir. I would like uh, some more spread, please. Some what? Spread for the bread. No more spread for the bread. All of them. Give me some corned beef, will you? No more corned beef. The corned beef I know, but I got 40 hungry soldiers out there that want corned beef. Can I make corned beef? No, but I got to have corned Don't stand there. Do something. Call somebody out. Who do I call? The OPA, the OPI, the OPX. Well, where are they? Where? Washington, yes. Washington? Call them up. All right, I'll sure. Hello. Hello, I want to get Washington, D.C., yes. I want to talk, huh? Talk to somebody about the food situation. I guess you, I'll, I'll get you over. Yeah, well, all see, look, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Get the spread. Get the spread. Let's see if you get a quarter, get pound, of quarter pound of butter in an egg. Quarter pound of butter in an egg. Quarter pound of butter. Keep it well. Oh, hello, Washington. I want to tell you something about this food situation. It's awful. We have no corned beef. We have no corned beef. And we have no ketchup to put on the corned beef. If I was the head man of Washington, I'd fire you immediately. Do you know who this is? No, and I don't care. Who is it? This is the head of the draft board. <laughs> Do you know who this is? No. Goodbye. I do say it myself. I can flirt up a pretty sandwich. This is for my darling. Well, thank you, my dear. Oh, it's not for you. It's for that adorable sailor from Savannah. Oh, is that the boy who came up to me the other day and said, uh, thank you, Mr. Lunt, and I said, you're welcome, but what for? Uh, and he said, I'm having so much fun with your wife? Oh, no, no. That boy came from Norfolk. Oh, you do get around, don't you? I don't, but the sailors do. Coffee? If you please, ma'am. I heard Joe recording of the White Cliffs of Dover, Miss Fontaine. You did? I come from Dover. Oh, you do? I think it was magnificent. Oh, thank you very much. I loved making the record. Hey, what band is she with? <laughs> oh, I know you. I've seen you act. Well, any dear, can it be that my personality survives tray scraping? Aren't you Alfred Fontaine? <laughs> Isn't he? Yes. Have another. Mr. Lunt, my career on the stage won't be complete until I've worked with you. Well, my boy, now's your chance. You work this garbage pail right up to Schubert Alley. Yes, Mr. Lunt. Johnny! Bring some more plates! All right, Miss Fontaine. My goodness, but it's hot in here. It's beastly hot. I'm suffocating. That's what I say. Now I feel natural. Oh, my, what a chest. Oh! Oh! 
enjoying yourselves, boys? Well, I mean, are you getting enough to eat? I hope so. Mrs. Knish? How are you, Mrs. Knish? This is Georgie Jessel. Say, Mrs. Knish, I wonder if you wouldn't do me a favor. It's such a lovely night out. Would you mind walking up four flights to my mother's new apartment and getting her down to your phone? Yeah. No, unfortunately, we can't use our phone. We got something is wrong. We got with a bill something, I don't know. Who knows what it is? They sent up two men, unscrewed the whole phone, and took everything out. The book they left, yeah. Oh, that's what it is, Mr. Knish, yes. It's a spite work in the downtown office. Oh, you say my mother is there in your apartment? Well, well, that is a coincidence. I say it, it's good that she's there. You shouldn't run up the stairs. Yeah, would you put my mother on the phone? Say, say soldier, would you tell him I'll be right there? Sure. Thank you. Hello? Mom? Georgie, your son from the money every week. How are you, dear? Oh, I'm fine. I'm down here in the canteen. You know, I go on in a minute. No, I, I can't talk about the landlord now. This will wait, like always, with the landlord. No, you see, Ethel Merman, the star of Something for the Boys, goes on, then I follow her. We'll be singing hallelujah, marching through Berlin. We'll be singing hallelujah, marching through Berlin. The devil put on a different face, came to slake the human race. Be carried away. That Hitler man will meet his judgment day. Sing hallelujah. We'll be singing hallelujah. Marching through Berlin. We'll be singing hallelujah. Marching through Berlin. When we get there, we're gonna see the world has peace and liberty. Thank you, girls, for filling in for us tonight. <laughs> I know how hard it is on shoes and stockings. Oh, we wouldn't mind coming every night. You got a letter from Cousin Milford. All right, what does he say? He's in the Army three months. He's already a Brigadier General. Yeah, around in three months, he couldn't be a Brigadier General. Read the letter again. He's generally in the brig. This I thought, this I thought, yeah. Well, all right, look, I can't talk about it anymore now, because I got to follow Xavier Kuget. That's the Rumba King. Xavier, Xavier, Xavier. Stop saying Gesundheit, that's the man's name, Xavier. Who we went Muy buenas, mis amigos. Ahora vamos a tocar para ustedes una nueva rumba guaracha que se titula La Bomba de Brooklyn. The Bombshell from Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, I've been practicing on my accent so much that it's becoming perfect. <laughs>
bombshell from the Pampers. She's a lady who has been through the mill. Just a bombshell from Brooklyn and not from Brazil. And her accent is atrocious. She's a senorita with beans to spill. A bombshell from Brooklyn and not from Brazil. The only thing Brazilian about her is her bump. It makes your heart begin to jump. And though she talks about the enders to a chump, she made her debut in a Coney Island dump. She is known as Belladonna, but her birth certificate says McGill. She's a bombshell from Brooklyn and not from Brazil. Are you taken for this dance? Oh, no. Any of our boys told you what Australian beer is made of? No. It's made of uh, kangaroo hops. <laughs> I'm going to wind up a commando. You sure will. <laughs> a bird. Oh, got the rug, cutie. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Oh. Cutting her talk, she's cut with me, see? Well, I'm cutting in, see? Well, we wouldn't dance and see. The lady would just show me a couple of steps. Well, I'll show her a couple of steps, see? Maybe I can show you a couple of steps. No, 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 just between us, boys. Look here, now, there are rules in this joint. You can't fight, you can't dance together, and I can't dance with you because I'm a senior hostess, see? Who's you? Me! Oh, Miss, uh, Miss Ina Claire, may I have yeah. your autograph, please? Ah, a soldier and a gentleman. Confused. <clears throat> All right. All right, put Sister Anna on. Hello, Anna. Look, honey, uh, I know this isn't a time or a place to say such things to you, but what's going to be with that fella, for heaven's sake? You're engaged now 33 years, Anna. When he gets a job, but he wouldn't get a job. Any fellow who gets fired from the five and ten cent store because he can't remember the prices, such a fella... I'll be there, mate. I'll be there. Hello. What are you sticking your neck out for? Food or gals? Gals, sir. Well, I hope we find our own. Oh, you've been here before. Oh, yes, sir. We know our way around. <laughs> now, Miss, before I joined up, I was an engineer on a banana plantation. An engineer on a banana plantation? That's right. I had charge of the machine that bends the bananas. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're clipping, Saucy? She tell you how she went nuts better than anybody ever went nuts before? Yes, but I thought you went to her. I didn't know you was having a private war. Takes me back to the sands of Egypt. Take over, mighty. I held her for you. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Look what we found, Dakota. A little old Yankee gal and a daughter of the Confederacy. <laughs> you want to dance? I just finished, thanks. I thought you weren't coming tonight. I thought you were on the high seas. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come, huh? Nice of that, too. Australian to look out for me. For you? Why, well, he knows you interest me. Oh, how tell me. And I suppose you talk me over? Well, sure. He's stationed near us over in Jersey. He said if he got here before I did, he'd rope you off for me. I told him to look for the prettiest girl in the place. That's how he identified you. Hey, uh, you ever been in this place before? Yeah, sure. Well, look, I, I've been in both these here wars, and uh, I've been in plenty of joints. But I just can't figure this one out. What do you mean, Sarge? Well, you come in, you get free chow, free entertainment, free dancing. And with dames that come right up and ask you to. What I'd like to know is, uh, when do we get clipped? 
<laughs> Relax, Sergeant, you don't. It's on the level. What? You mean we don't even get rolled afterwards? I know. See your hand, Eileen. Looks like you've already got it. Hmm, I thought so. I'd never have guessed it. Guessed what? That you've got a lot of emotion and stuff. And look at your mountain of the sun. You're gonna be famous. On the stage? Didn't say where, just famous. And look at your heart line. You're gonna meet a guy when you're 20. This fellow's going away for a while. It says here he's coming back. Does it say I'll be gone when he does come back? Yes, he'll have to find you. Since I'm going to be famous, I guess he'll just have to look in the headlines, won't he? Just one thing to look out for, it says. Not to be too ambitious or cold-blooded about letting your head guide you more than your heart. Attention! Attention! Attention, everybody! Attention! Men attached to the following unit will report back to their post immediately. This is an official order from your commanding officer. All men from the 1st Battalion, 28th Marines, will report for duty at once. Goodbye, Helen. This is it. So long, Jim, for a little while. I sure hope so. I did, too, for a minute. I thought they were going to call your name. Well, I didn't even know you remembered it. Smith. Private Smith, isn't it? That's right. But what's the matter with you two? Haven't you been properly introduced? We got to know each other pretty well, Miss Anderson. Well, as they say in Madison Square Garden, ma'am, this is return engagement. <laughs> well, I'll bet two to one on the soldier. Knockout in the second round. I like your friend, Miss Anderson. You and a few million others. Was she famous? Are you kidding? Oh, she's Judith Anderson. Why, oh, sure. She played Mrs. Danvers and Rebecca. Oh, well, they do have movies in Sioux Falls. We're not that deep in the sticks. I guess I'm not very good company for you. <laughs> I must seem like a sap to you. Gouda said last night he'd lost his touch with women. I'd like to give her a quick kick in the, you know. <laughs> Guess I'll head back to camp. So long. I'll see you in California, back at the barracks. Anything wrong? Yeah, with me. Uh, could I please talk to you a minute? You see, you see, my wife's having a baby back home. She's in the hospital tonight, and I can't be with her. Gee, I'd sure love to talk to somebody. Why, certainly. <laughs> OK, boys. Run along and have a good time. If you want anything, just holler. I swell fella, Tallulah. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Frankhead. You're not so bad yourself, I didn't know it was this late. I'd better get going. <laughs> Miss Pa. Miss Pa? What does that mean? Where did you get that expression, young man? Oh, that's a little something between me and my wife. Instead of saying goodbye, we always say Miss Pa. Well, what does it mean? It's a word from the Bible. It's beautiful. It means the Lord watches between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Well, soldier, you'll do your job well under that sign. And don't forget we're going to do our job well, too, under the same sign. Ms. Pa, soldier. Ms. Pa. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Take it easy, sailor. Don't go overboard. <laughs> and now, everybody, Guy Lombardo playing Sleep, Baby Sleep in your Jeep.
the deep blue sea May you dream of me May angels care for my boy over there And my prayer shall be May you dream of me You're just a babe in my arms A kid on my knee A wee little tot Nearly six foot three So sleep, baby, sleep In your jeep While the blue shadows creep And then dream of me again what his girl had that I didn't have, and he told me. The rat? I've never even kissed a girl. <laughs> Didn't you ever even play post office? Oh, yes. But I never had the nerve to collect anything if a girl sent for me. Oh. <sighs> know what I've been wondering? Mm-hmm. I think so. Would you like me to be your number one kiss? I'd be honored, California. Of course, I, I wouldn't dream of breaking the rules down here, but I'll bend them a little for you. Uh, you just pick your moment. The lights are down a little bit, and the music's just right. Good night. California asked me how old I was again tonight. What did you tell him, honey? <laughs> A lie. <laughs> Texas says that kid loads their anti-tank gun faster than any man in the whole battery. Oh, girls, I had a call from Gilbert Miller office for his new play, and the part's a piece. Well, if it isn't the knife of the party. I'd be ashamed of myself, Eileen, treating Dakota like dirt. You certainly were an all-around heel tonight. The way you walked out on him. Who walked out on who? I had to talk to a soldier who was going to have a baby. The way you two jump on me, you'd think he was General MacArthur. Well, not yet, sugar. But Texas does say he's the best gunner there is. Oh, is that what he does? My goodness. You've certainly been showing a mighty lack of interest in that young man. Did you know Dakota turned down Sergeant Stripes just so he could stick with his pals? No, he's not General MacArthur, but the boys swear by him just the same. Dakota's a sweet boy. A lot sweeter than he gets treated. He gets back when he gives out. Ever occur to you that if you gave out with something nice, that's what you'd get back? 
I sure do like the taste of this new toothpaste. Reminds me of mint julep. Now, I'm going to read my mail in comfort. <laughs> Texas says he feels out of place with me in the canteen, Gene. <laughs> he wishes we could have been back down south under a little old magnolia tree. <laughs> I kind of wish the same thing. He's right cute. Darn it, I, I wish California'd kiss me tonight when nobody was looking. I left myself wide open. I keep thinking they'll sail away without anybody ever kissing him. And it'd be my fault, too. I was sort of his last chance. Here's a letter for you, Jean, mixed up in mine. Looks like it's from your brother. Oh, Marine Corps, it is. That cute, handsome thing. Does he know Mary's had her baby? Mm -hmm. Mary wrote him. The letter's on its way. It's a boy. What's the matter? Something wrong? No, but just listen to this. Dear sis, I'm still waiting to hear from Mary about whether we have a son or a daughter or both. By the time you receive this, you and the folks may have read about us in the newspapers. You know how censorship is. I just want you to know, sis, that I'm not afraid of anything that may be ahead. And assure you that we are all anxious to do our utmost in any engagement we might have. We know our weapons and equipment are superior to theirs. And in addition, each one of us knows that man for man, a Marine can outshoot, out bayonet, outlast, and if necessary, kill any blankety blank Jap he has seen so far with his bare hands. They can talk all they want about the Japs' jujitsu. But a Marine will tell you it doesn't work against a roundhouse right to the jaw. Though neither I nor none of you have mentioned it before, there's naturally a chance that I may not come back from this war. And of course, I still don't think the folks or Mary should be reminded of it. However, sis, I'd like you more than anyone to know my feelings. Dad and Mom always did everything a son could wish for. You've been the perfect sister. And I certainly consider myself the luckiest man in the world in having Mary for my wife. Certainly no one in this world has a greater claim to happiness than I have. I remember what Dad said when we all had dinner before I shoved off. He said that other things may not matter, but that I could never live down a failure in my country's service. And I won't fail Dad, whatever happens. Just as I remember always how lucky I am to have a kid sister like you. Bill. You'll come back, honey. I know, but I'll say my prayers just the same. Kind of get you, though. Kids like Bill and California. Dakota, Texas. I guess this is as good a time as any to realize what a heel I've been. Good night, kids. Good night, Eileen. Good night, Ella Sue. Good night, Charles. Nobody ever won a medal in bed. If anybody ever did, it'd be little old me. Gee, do you guys realize my mammy's only a couple of miles away? Uh, mister? Come here. Um, you know Jersey Wallace? No, ma'am. We're going to get married this morning if he doesn't have to go someplace. We've been going together two years, so his captain gave him permission to fool. You know. Yes, miss, I know. I hope oh, you make it. It goes me if good. If it means we'll only have the next 24 hours together, well, as man and wife, it'll be worth it. It's too bad you don't know Jersey. You'd be crazy about him like I am. You ought to read the beautiful letters he writes me. I carry him with me every place. I like to read them over while I eat my lunch. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Hey, baby! Where are you? 24 hours. Oh, gee, honey. We got another 24 hours, baby. Meet my best men. 
This is Dakota. This is Texas. Hello, Mamie. Hello. Well, you're right pretty for a Yankee. <laughs> Did you tell me, buddy? Oh, here's California. He'll be your bridesmaid. Hello, Mamie. Oh, gee, Jersey. Being married to you is going to be the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Did you pick out a marriage chapel? Uh, yeah. I got this one. We'll get everything for $10, including the fellow who plays the organ. Oh, gee, that's swell. Come on, guys. Let's go. Wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I will. Will? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, who gives this woman in marriage? I guess I do, Your Honor. You will love each other? And comfort each other? We will. We will. Repeat these words after me. In sickness and in health. In sickness, sickness and in health. health. Until death, us do part. Until, Until death, death, us do part. Us do part. As long as we both shall live. As, as long, long as we both shall, both shall, shall live. live. Well, <laughs> nice of you guys to escort us here. <laughs> so long. Aren't you going to invite us in? Oh, well, um, don't we get to kiss the bride? Oh, yeah, yeah. Help yourself now that I've signed her up. <laughs> I've sort of promised my first kiss to somebody else. But I know you'll like being married to Jersey. <laughs> I've been eating across from him for six months. He doesn't look so good in the mornings, but you get sort of used to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, just what I was thinking. Let's go, guys. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> See you later, fellas. <laughs> How can I leave thee? How can I from thee part? You only have my heart. What are you guys going to do between now and 5 o'clock till the old canteen opens? Well, I'm not going to the canteen tonight. What else you guys want to do? Well, it's bowl. Oh, I'd rather go back to the canteen, Dakota. Well, you run along with Tex, then. No, I'll stick with you. Oh, who wants to bowl? Besides, we don't need to exercise. We'll get in front of it where we're going. I'll take in the canteen tonight. See you guys later. I wonder if Gene will be there tonight. OK, kid. We'll bowl this afternoon and go back to the canteen tonight for another fling. Thanks, Dakota. I should be envious of you, Eileen, but I'm not. You deserve it. You read the lines beautifully. Thank you, I... Congratulations. <laughs> what a break, playing opposite Paul Muni. Bye. See you at rehearsal. So long and thanks. It's funny. This is the day I've been waiting for, but somehow I'm, I'm not getting the kick out of it that I thought I would. I know it's bothering you. You're still thinking of Dakota, aren't you? Oh, well, come on, forget it. He's, he's probably forgotten you by now. Sure he has. And he certainly took away a fine impression of me, didn't he? Oh, snap out of it. Hello, Eileen. Say, I hear you're in. Good girl. Thanks, Mr. Muni. Oh, this is my friend, Miss Rubel. How, How do you do? Hear? See, we're going over for a little dinner to celebrate over at the Algonquin. Nothing elaborate, just something quiet. How about you two joining us, huh? Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Muni, but I... But I, but I, come, come, I won't take no for an answer. See you over there, both of you. Bye. Bye. Elsa, 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 I'd like to be a giraffe. Why a giraffe? So I could get in a little extra necking. <laughs> Too bad. I'd like to be a skunk. A skunk? Why? So I could choose my own friend. <laughs> The boys are far too good. I think we've got to give the girls a chance. Girls, ten bucks for the best answer. If you could be any woman, what woman would you be? Oh. <laughs> Hitler's widow! I <laughs> found a widow! Fellas, Miss Ethel Waters and the famous Count Basie and his orchestra. <laughs> Love song you used to make. 
when you call me, I followed and followed you till I was swallowed by quicksand. It was the devil who brought you to me. Now I'm caught in those quicksands that keep dragging me down. in those quicksands that keep on dragging me down. It was a dead end street. I was walking with you from the start. How can I'm joining the WAC tomorrow. Good girl, Pat. So oh, fine. Dr. Christian, uh, uh, Mr. Yeah, Herschel, boy. I'm from uh, California, and I've all... So am I. Excuse <laughs> me, Mr. Herschel, but we're trying to get some friends in here. Oh, bring them right in. Well, you see, we met them in a bowling alley this uh, afternoon. They're Russian sailors. All the more reason. One of them was a girl. Are they in uniform? <laughs> Not all of them. Well, those without uniform can go over to our merchant marine canteen. Well, they don't understand English very well, except one. He's a guide. I think they'll have to stick together. Well, as long as they're here, why shouldn't we at least... Let them look along. Certainly, Jean. You can bring them in as your personal guests. I'm sure the boys would love to see them. Uh, is there anybody here who can speak Russian? Sam Jaffe is a busboy tonight. He's our man. Good. Uh, I'll get him. Thank you. Bring in your friend. Thank you. You're early tonight, aren't you? You haven't missed one time, have you? Wonderful. Hold everything. Settle down for a second. This young lady and these men are our fighting allies. They're Russian warriors. All five of them have been in battle. This man here has been wounded three times, was discharged, and joined the fleet as a volunteer. Believe it or not, to recuperate. <laughs> no, he's not afraid of submarines. He's been torpedoed three times. Are you a fighter? What is that fighter? Boom, 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 boom. Yes, I see the battle. Many times? Yes, many times. What position do you hold on the boat? I don't understand you. I am assistant of captain. Oh, captain's mate. Yes. Do you have any romance on the boat? No. I married and I have baby boys. Oh, where is your baby boy? With my mother. Uh, right now, in the hands of the Germans in occupied Russia. And I can imagine what you would do if you met a Nazi. Yes, my hand would not tremble. These people represent the flesh and blood that stopped the Germans at Stalingrad. Did I say stopped? I meant exterminated. <laughs> yes, we're all on the same fight together. Now, go ahead and have a good time. Quiet for a moment. You're going to meet an eminent authoress, a lady of letters, a young writer who went from without rags to riches. <laughs> also star of Star and Garter, our own Gypsy Rose Lee. Have you 
have the faintest idea about the private life of an exotic dancer. Well, up until a few years ago, it was New York's second largest industry. <laughs> now, a fan dancer's education requires years of concentration. And for the sake of explanation, take a look at me. I began at the age of three. <laughs> learning ballet at the Royal Imperial School in Moscow. Oh, I suffered and suffered for my art. Then, of course, Sweet Briar. Oh, dear college days. <laughs> And after four years of psychology, zoology, biology, and anthropology, <laughs> my education was complete. And I was ready to make my professional debut for the Minsky's on 14th Street. <laughs> now, the things that go on in a fan dancer's mind would give you no end of surprise. But if you're psychologically inclined, there's more to see than meets the eyes. For an example, when I lower my gown a fraction and expose a patch of shoulder, I'm not interested in your reaction or in the bareness of my shoulder. I'm thinking of some painting by Van Gogh or by Cezanne, or the charm I found in reading Lady Windermere's fan. When I lower the other side, expose my other shoulder, do you think I take the slightest pride in the whiteness of that shoulder? I'm thinking of my country house, or the jolly funny shooting grouse. <laughs> There's the music, and that's my cue. There's only one thing left to do. So I do it. And when I raise my skirts, the slyness and dexterity, I'm mentally computing just how much I'll give to charity. <laughs> And though my stockings I have revealed, and just a bit of me remains concealed. <laughs> I'm thinking of the life of Dooza. <laughs> well, the third chapter of all this in heaven, too. <laughs> and none of those men whose minds were obscene. <laughs> they leave me apathetic. I prefer the more aesthetic, things like dramas by Racine. Take the last thing off. Oh. Well, practically. <laughs> and stand there shyly, looking demurely at every man. Do you believe for one moment that I'm thinking of art? No! Well, I certainly am. <laughs> anymore. Oh. Who would make it didn't star and got her? Oh, boys, I couldn't. I catch cold. <laughs> Don't you ever smile, Mr. Sparks? I'm smiling now. Well, uh, tell me, sir, how did your face get that way? Don't you know everything is frozen these days? <laughs> so that's the last I saw of Egypt. Yes, well, I'd like you to meet a pal of mine who's maybe going where you've been. Dakota. 
Meet Johnny Jones, a real fighting man, fresh and hot from Australia. Well, how was it down there? Oh, kind of exciting spots. I'm itching to get back. What's that you got in your chest, Johnny? Oh, just a ribbon. Yeah, but it comes with a distinguished service cross. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Hope we meet again. Maybe down there. Right. You mean one What is it, boy? Is there something you wanted to ask me? How did you know? Oh, I've had this experience before. You just flew over, and you want your English pound notes changed into American dollars. Am I right about that? We want to do the town before we take off. Good. We don't want to shortchange you. Oh, don't you worry about that. Helen Mankin! Oh, yes, Johnny, here I am. Our MC isn't back yet. He had to go to his radio show. Would you please introduce Freddie Martin? Oh, yes, of course. Where is he? He's on stage already. All right. I'll be right there. Thank you. Goodbye again, boys. Good luck, and... Happy landing. Goodbye. Thank you very much. There's no need of introducing Freddie Martin to you because I see that you all know him. <laughs> yourself a comb and toothbrush pack a pillow full of dreams that may come true in a little place they call don't worry island we can lease a piece of paradise for two there's a chipper skipper on the moonlight clipper who will stow away your troubles in the sea it's been said he's heading for don't worry island and if that's where he is going so are we concerning clothes i would advise a pair of lips a pair of eyes outside of those take all the charm that you can put into my arm you can reach right out and pick a peach for breakfast you can shake your dinner off an apple tree to a little place they call don't worry island take along your blue so long and come I wish Jean were here. I wouldn't even care if she were late. Oh, how are you? Hello, Hello boys. We've got to get our aprons on. Hello. Hello, Hello sugar. Hi, honey. Oh, where's Eileen? Looks like she's gone and got a part in Gilbert Miller's new show. Guess she's off celebrating. Hear that, you guys? Eileen's landed a part in the show. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, I bet you're wondering why she isn't doing her celebrating down here. Well, sure. We celebrate good. Are you here all the way from China, my friend? Yes. I'm one of the Chinese air cadets who came here to earn our wings. Too bad we haven't any chop suey here for you Chinese boys, I reckon. I'm thinking of introducing chop suey in China when I get back. as the latest American novelty. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do talk funny for an air cadet all the way from China. Well, and you sure talk funny for a man from the United States. <laughs> hey, aren't those wings you're wearing? Yes. We won them today, and we're leaving for China tonight. You see, we are rather anxious to try our wings on those sons of heaven. <laughs> Contact! Take off! They just won their wings, and they're heading home for a crack at Hirohito. The Chinese Fighting March.
commanding officer of these new pilots has asked me to speak for him. He wants me to thank you boys for your warm demonstration of our feeling for them. Don't you think it is we who should thank them and all the Chinese people for their magnificent courage and steadfastness? It is like a light to guide the free peoples of the world. That's a small indication of how we feel. And now their officer regrets having to take them away so early, but it seems they have some work to do across the Pacific. I want to thank you boys for your friendship, and I hope we meet again. So long, friend. Goodbye. And don't forget to send me a postcard from Tokyo. Mm, you <laughs> bet I will, Miss Lang. And thanks for your kindness. So Miss O'Brien. We won't forget. Good luck. Did you hear that, Dame May? They were thanking us. Yes, I heard. What, eating alone, soldier? Well, yes, Eileen isn't here tonight, Miss Anderson. Oh, well, do you want me to introduce you to another girl? Well, no, thanks. It's the same, Miss Anderson. I guess I'll just sit here and... <sighs> I, I want to apologize for not knowing who you were. <laughs> no apologies necessary. I didn't know who you were either. That ten, Chun! Lanny Ross! A pair of little people, their biggest moment comes. She says goodbye, his soft reply is heard above the drum. In dreams, we'll all Beneath the moonlit sky, we mustn't say goodbye. Each night, I'll push aside the mountain, I'll drain the ocean dry, we mustn't say I promise you that when the postman rings, my heart will be inside the envelope he brings. Oh, don't you know the man? When the postman rings, my heart will be inside the envelope he brings. Oh, don't you know the memories we gathered can never Dressed up to celebrate the new part? The girls tell you? Yeah. Good luck. I hope you're hit. Well, thanks, Dakota. Well, there's no sense in keeping the guy you're going to celebrate with waiting. Don't you want me to stay here? I had my hair done and wore this dress for you. Yeah, I'll bet. 
You just said to yourself, I'll bet the coat would like my hair fixed this way. Well, look, we'll probably never see each other again. I don't mean anything to you, and you... And I don't mean anything to you. Is that what you were going to say? Oh, I, I was. I couldn't finish it. Here's something for the cats. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you a cranky brawl by a sharpie who plays a licorice stick that's out of this world. <laughs> the guy who knocked them off their seats and rolled them into a groove, Benny Goodman. <laughs> California, why? Well, they're killing me. <laughs> oh, California, you're my dream man. How about it? You want to hold me while you dance? Thank <laughs> you. 
There comes a time in everyone's life when a moment of seriousness is appreciated. We offer you that moment tonight. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce one of the world's great concert violinists, Mr. Manuin. I would like to play for you Schubert's Ave Maria. And now, for the first insect that's ever been in the stage door canteen, the flight of the bumblebee. <laughs>
funny. It wasn't hard to find things to say when we were taking cracks at each other. But now I... You've run out of words? No, I'm just trying to find the right ones. We've wasted a lot of time, haven't we? Things keep coming to my mind, and I feel like talking. But we haven't any more time. I like this song, but it seems like they always play it too soon. <laughs> I'm gonna make it tonight. You know. I know. And I'll be ready and waiting. That's the ammunition. Pick up my past. I wouldn't want that to happen. Nobody need know. It's like the honor system at school. Even your best friends have to report you. Suppose I were just anybody who wanted to be with you and I just happened to see you. That wouldn't make me a date. I just can't tell you the subway station where I get off. It's against the rules. But the girls, they live with me and they get off at Washington Square. Good night, honey. Good night, sugar. Good night, Kelly. Good, 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 Good night. Good night. I'll see you later. Stop off and see the honeymooners. I'll see you guys at the barracks. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Coffee, yeah. Lost my ration book. <clears throat> Been a long time, you know. <laughs> uh, FBI, huh? And Texas says he doesn't like glamour girls. He likes girls that don't care him. <laughs> Tex is awfully smooth. He never says what he's thinking. Who's got a key tonight? I must have left mine in my other purse. I've got mine. If they go to Egypt, do you think they'll fall for those Egyptian women with the stomach? Ella Sue, are you sure you locked the front door after us? Oh, no, I'm not right sure. Well, I won't be able to sleep until I make certain. Shucks, honey, it was my fault. I'll go. Oh, no, no, I'll go. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid they'd find out. All the courage I need. Hello, Eileen. Hello. Well, hello. They're from the canteen. They'll have to report me. Oh, Dakota. The stairs inside keep going right up to the roof. As soon as I make sure the girls are asleep. 
I'll join you there. Bouncing around a bit too. Boom, 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 boom. It's a wonder they'd let you in the army with a heart like that. You're skipping beats. If I'd kissed you before I took my examination, I'd still be in Dakota. My knees are shaking. What with everything. Well, uh, shall we sit down? There's so much for us to find out about each other. I wonder if we like the same things. Like what? Like rainy weather? I like it. We never got enough back home. I do too. I like everything there is about it. The way it makes the roof shine at night, walking in it, breathing deep. Say, how do you look out of uniform? Pretty naked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what kind of clothes do you like best? Uh -huh. Old ones. Baggy where you can use the room. I like that. Do you like dogs? I had to leave my dogs at the station. Couldn't take them to camp. I, I got a letter from the old station master saying they stayed there. <laughs> they wouldn't go home to the folks I gave them to. The old boy said he'd keep them for me and let them live in the baggage room when I got back. Gee, I, I miss those pups. Maybe someday we'll, we'll walk with them in the rain. If I had a workshop in the basement? No, I, I like the smell of shavings and the way they crackle in the fireplace and the smell of wood smoke. And us sitting like this. Maybe it's evening. And I've just come home from work and we've just had dinner. We're sitting by that fireplace. I like nice hot baths on cold nights before I go to bed. I'm a shower man myself. And I'm a tough girl. We wouldn't fight over anything, would we? I've never proposed to another boy in all my life. Honest. It wouldn't be fair to you, Eileen. I'm yours if you want me. It's up to you. I'd love to get letters addressed to Mrs. Dakota Smith. Suppose you were the greatest star on Broadway when I came back, and I was only, well, maybe a sergeant. Then I'd have him put Mrs. Sergeant Smith up in lights five feet high. We'll get some sleep. I'll go to my rehearsal, and I could be ready by five. It's dawn. Where will I meet the bride? The same place we met. Stage door canteen. If that's a job for me, don't ask any questions. Just say yes. I will. Hello? Yes? Oh, what? That's ridiculous. She didn't have a date with a soldier last night. She came home with us. Tell him I had a date with the dearest, most adorable darling. Oh, yes, she said she had a date with the dearest, most adorable. What? You might as well go on inside, girls. I'll let you know when he comes. Here you go. Hello, Eileen. What are you doing out here? They took my car away, so I can't go inside. Why? Well, it's all right, Miss Royal. I'm... I'm going to be married today. You are full of surprises. Congratulations. And mine, Eileen. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Have you ever broken any rules, Selena? Of course, you're right. Shall we make an exception in her case? Why don't we make up a rule of our own? The brides don't have to wait on sidewalks. I'll get it. Eileen. Here they come, girls. Start circulating. She knows. I told her. I'll wait in the dressing room. <laughs> yes, and I think it's wonderful. The groom will probably arrive with his entire company to get her. 
Thanks, Ellen. That's very sweet of you. Okay, Ralph. I wonder how many boys will be in tonight. Oh, the usual number, I guess. 6,000 were here over the weekend. Still keeps up. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful. Oh, first time at the canteen, eh? Yes, ma'am. Well, now, would you rather eat first or dance first? Eat first, I think, ma'am. Virginia, show this boy the ropes, eh? This is Virginia Gray. What's your name? Don Brent. Hello, Virginia. Hello, Don. On second thought, I think I'd like to dance first. <laughs> well, come on. Thanks just the same, but we won't dance anymore for a while. I declare, I'll just look at the time. It's getting awfully late. Oh, Eileen, you won in the foyer with Ella, Sue, and Jean. to find you, ladies. Your, <clears throat> your boys sailed off to the war this morning. But they each give me something to say, so I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. The lad from the South, miss, he, he said he hoped he'd find you sitting in a little old hammock under a magnolia tree when he comes back. The young lad from California, miss, he, he said to thank you for making him feel like a man. Dakota, miss, Dakota sends you his, his dearest love. Seemed a bit wrought up, don't you know? But he said he hoped you'd still be his missus if... when he comes back. He said he'd love you all his life. All his life. He's got to live. bet it isn't fair, but it's happening. Oh, Miss Hepburn, I just heard... Yes, I know. He sent you his dearest love and said he hoped to be his missus when he got back. I can't stand it. I've got to get out of... Wait a minute. Why'd you volunteer for this work? Uh, because I wanted to help. Help what? I wanted to help my country. Why do you think your country needs your help? We're in a war and we've got to win. Yes, that's right. We're in a war and we've got to win. And we're going to win. And that's why the boy you love is going overseas. And isn't that maybe why you're going to go back in there and get on your job? Look, you're a good kid. I don't wonder he loves you. He knows what he's fighting for. He's fighting for the kind of world in which you and he can live together in happiness, in peace, in love. Don't ever think about quitting. Don't ever stop for a minute working, fighting, praying until we've got that kind of a world. For you, for him, for your children, for the whole human race. Days without end. Night, every night until victory. Thousands, millions of lads like California, Tex, and Dakota will find momentary escape from the war, from homesickness. Tonight, every night until victory, this light will be gleaming, offering them laughter, music, friendship, beauty, and something to remember.